Welcome to Coastal Cooking with your host, Carmela Campbell. Coastal Cooking features delicious recipes and cooking tips from the Gulf Coast's finest chefs and restaurants. Watch as popular local chefs prepare their special dishes with natural gas. Coastal Cooking is brought to you by Pensacola Energy, provider of clean, efficient, natural gas. My guests today are from V. Paul's Italian Restaurante right here in Pensacola. And joining me is Executive Chef Brian Vaughn and sous chef Scott Smith. So glad to have you guys here today. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. you got some great, of course, V. Paul's recipes. Tell everyone what you'll be cooking today, Brian. Today we're going to start off with a porcini encrusted tuna um, with tomato jam. Then we'll move on to a chicken marsala and finishing up with a seafood risotto. Oh. All sounds wonderful. Thank you. Where are we going to start with? Okay, today we're going to start with, like I said, the um, porcini and crusted tuna. Okay. Um, the tomato jam is usually what will take you the longest. So uh, in order to do the tomato jam, mm -hmm. we will score a uh, plum tomato, in this case as aroma. And then um, you want to put that into some blanching water. Mm -hmm. And typically this will take, you know, four to five minutes. Basically. Okay, whenever it starts crinkling and right, the basically, skin separates. Skin will start peeling off a little bit and that in that case you'll know, you know, that you're pretty close to being done with it. Okay. Perfect. All right, and then um, for this purpose we already went ahead and blanched off a few of the Roma tomatoes. Mm -hmm. um, basically all you're gonna do is peel these skins. The skins, you know, can kind of uh, be a little chewy if you leave right. them on and that's kind of the purpose of why we blanch them. Especially in a jam. Absolutely. You don't want yes, that no. in there. This is an interesting dish, tomato jam. I think. It's real popular. It's probably, you know, one of our most popular um, appetizers mm -hmm. on the menu. Oh, so this is an appetizer? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So right now all I'm doing is trying to squeeze the seeds out, basically. Mm -hmm. So this is an important process, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. You want the seeds and the skin off, so you just have the, really the pulp. Right. Can you store this? To use later? Oh yeah, you can it's store this. Um, this this stuff, you know, stays uh, good for a while. Okay. Um, it's got a great shelf life on it. Mm -hmm. So you could make a lot. Absolutely. Right? You know, this would make great gifts. The Absolutely. Christmas gifts in a nice little jar. Because it's very different. Yeah. What else would it be good on, Scott? I guess you could put it on uh, sausage. It goes well with pork. Oh, okay. And uh, also turkey. It has, a, it has a sweet and also a savory flavor to Instead it. Of cranberry sauce, right? Tomato jam. You can use tomato jam. And do you have a particular tomato you'd like to use, Brian? Yeah, these are uh, plum tomatoes. We uh, order Roma tomatoes in, in, uh, mm -hmm. in the restaurant. Okay. Easy to work with. They peel mm -hmm. real nicely. Mm -hmm. Seeds come out real easy. Yeah, um, that makes your job a lot easier, doesn't it? Yeah, they're, you know, they have plenty of juice, you know, which is what we're looking mm -hmm. for in this particular dish. So this is the basis, and you've got a this lot is the of other basis. ingredients, this is, too. This will be what takes yeah. you the longest. You okay. know, as far once you get this out of the way, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's literally minutes. All right, so once you have got it all peeled, um, you want to add your, uh, we'll start with sugar. And there we'll put a pinch of crushed red peppers, about a uh, tablespoon of balsamic, lemon zest, and lemon juice. And we'll, uh, we'll let this cook mm -hmm. on about a medium heat for approximately 15 minutes. Okay. It'll come, uh, you know, it'll become pretty uh, syrupy. Mm -hmm. And you happen to have some ready yes, too, for our plate. So once, once this cooks down, this is actually what we'll come up with. Is and a it's a beautiful jelly. Yeah, we want to get a close up. Look at that. The balsamic vinegar is what changes the red. Yes, ma'am. To kind of a, a deeper color. And it's a little chunky too, isn't it? Uh, yes. I like that. Okay. Okay, so for the next step in this dish, we're going to take the tuna and cut us off at about a six ounce piece, I would say. And um, we're gonna season it with salt and pepper. Beautiful tuna filet. 
Yeah, we use uh, yellowfin tuna in the restaurant, and that's what, this, what we have here today. So this process is pretty simple. We're just mm -hmm. gonna roll it in our uh, porcini crust. So in here we have dried porcinis, salt, pepper, garlic, a little bit of cayenne pepper, fresh mm -hmm. parsley, and uh, tarragon. And porcinis is a type of mushroom? Yes, ma'am. And you want it to be the dried Absolutely, variety. yeah. It, it goes best, especially for uh, searing purposes. Mm -hmm. And it crusts better, doesn't right. it? Right. So from here, we'll just uh, take it over and sear it in a pan. And now this part is entirely up to you or the guests in the case, you know, mm -hmm. um, Majority of people like their tuna from rare to mid-rare, but on occasion, you know, people want it well, medium well, and um, we basically cook it any way the um, customer would like. Do most people want it well? No, uh, they want like it I said, on the rare side. closer to rare, mid-rare. Uh, to me, it's the best. It's, it's the only way I can eat it. I can't eat it. It any. took me, you know, a while to get there, you know, but I finally got to where I like right. it rare. It's really good, and mm -hmm. it's an easy way to tell when it the temperature that you want by watching yeah you can kind of see on the sides uh-huh um this gives you a good indication of where we are temperature wise um so again basically this is a quick step um medium rare is only going to take us three to four minutes tops mm -hmm. usually about two minutes on each side and then we're done we'll mm -hmm. cut it plate it and send it out there you go it's one of the quickest dishes probably you yes, do, isn't it it really is so this is an appetizer you have a variety of menu items I mean, we, a really nice variety. Thank you. We do. We uh, we have quite a bit. We do a um, we do a ton of different appetizers. Again, mm -hmm. this is one of our more popular ones. But we get we get into octopus, mussels, clams, uh, uh, wrap, prosciutto, mm -hmm. all kinds of different stuff. And you know, the Italian cuisine features a lot of seafood. Right. You know, we typically think of you know meatballs and spaghetti and veal and all that. But you know, in Italy, seafood is yeah, I, I, their mainstays. I think we have a big variety of seafood for being an Italian restaurant. Mm -hmm, um, we serve scallops, we serve tuna, we serve uh, two or three different types of fish each day. Mm -hmm. We um, we serve uh, shrimp, lobster, octopus. You so I mean, I, I think we we have a good spread. You really do. You really mm -hmm. do. And I like your bar. Is it the bar appetizers? Yes, ma'am. That you can get. We do. Uh, you want to just come in for that and then some drinks? A lot of people come in just to hang out at the bar. Bar is uh -huh. huge. I mean, it's huge, very nice. And, um, I, you know, I work there, so it's easy for me to say I think it's the best bar, but I truly do. It's gorgeous. and um, It is. The, it's, the, it's the focal point almost of the restaurant. Absolutely. You know, it's so nice. How's it looking, Scott? Looking pretty good. What we're going to do is we're going to get all the sides of it, get a nice sear Look how inside. nice it, the uh, breading browns. Now when you're at home, uh, we're using a technique that's called saute. Uh -huh. So saute is high heat and very little oil. So you don't want to have a lot of oil in the pan, especially because the more oil, you'll tend to like cook the sides unevenly. Oh, okay. And then we'll stand it up on edge. And usually on the sides, you only need a few seconds. Once mm -hmm. you get to, you can actually see in the middle, this is going to be a nice mm -hmm. medium rare. You can see the thickness of how much is cooked on each side. So the sides really are just a really quick sear. Okay, you really have to watch this because it'll cook quicker than you think. Uh, if you want it rare, you have to watch it, right? Yep. Yes, ma'am. But you also want to make sure you get a nice, <clears throat> good heat on your pan so that it's not sticky. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people though have a low heat, and that'll cause the breadcrumbs and stuff to actually adhere to the pan. If you've got a, yes. if you're using a, a regular stainless steel pan, now if you're using nonstick, it's a little easier, and mm -hmm. that's what most people have gone to in their mm -hmm. houses. Um, but in the restaurants, we typically we like the stainless steel cookware is just typical for most restaurants. Mm -hmm. That looks great. We need to take a commercial break. How about if we finish this tuna and uh, have it ready when we get back? Awesome. Sound good? So we'll be right back. Stay with us. Heating water with electricity versus natural gas can cost twice as much, and tankless natural gas water heaters can add even more savings. So don't get soaked with higher energy costs. Learn more at PensacolaEnergy.com. Natural gas homes are in demand. Here's what home builders have to say. Gas provides a wonderful selling advantage over electricity. Customers love cooking with natural gas. It gets hotter faster. The temperature is actually more controllable. The energy efficiency absolutely plays a part with our decision to put natural gas in our homes. It's much more efficient for our customers to use natural gas. Natural gas from Pensacola Energy. 
the clean, reliable, earth-friendly choice. Natural gas dryers may cost a little more than electric ones, but they dry clothes quicker, making them cost half as much to run. So now who's getting taken to the cleaners? Learn more at PensacolaEnergy.com. Welcome back. We've got our crusted tuna with tomato jam. Tell us what you did, Yes, ma'am. To finish it, we just kind of cut the tuna on a bias. We put the tomato jam on the bottom of the plate. Uh, we garnished it with microgreens and a little bit of lemon oil. And it's beautiful. Thank you so much. Very nice. Okay, next is one of my favorite dishes at V. Paul's. It's uh, your favorite as long as, as well as a lot of other people. Um, this is uh, probably our most popular entree dish. And um, so next we're going to move and on to the- it's chicken marsala. Chicken marsala, yeah. yes ma'am. We're going to do chicken Great. marsala. Um, Scott here is going to take the chicken and um, season it. Before, uh, before you season it, you want to pound it out on um, that way the chicken cooks a little quicker and also gives you an even temperature mm -hmm. across, you know, cooks the same temperature. It really the makes time. a difference. It does. Because chicken breasts typically tend to have a thick right, side. Right, you don't want to have one piece where it's this thick and the tail mm -hmm. is this um, thin mm -hmm. or whatever. So so right now he's just dredging it in seasoned flour. We have a uh, little bit of salt, pepper, and uh, um, garlic, pep mm -hmm. um, sorry, garlic salt in it. So you don't you want your just lightly coated? Right, just lightly flour? coated. It'll give it a nice crispy mm -hmm. crust on the outside, and again, it'll um, the thinness will allow it to cook evenly. Okay, and Scott, what are you frying those in? Sauteing those in? Uh, it's just a little bit of uh, uh, extra virgin olive oil and some butter. And butter. Okay. It, the butter will help give it a little bit more of a color to it. It'll mm -hmm. Help the, the flour kind of brown out. Uh, we'll put the thyme in there with it to give it a little season. And then about have, once I flip them over, then I'll add the garlic and the shallots. Okay. And those will take Get all those flowers. Bit. They will not no, take No, with the size of they are, and, and again, pounding it out yes. helps a lot. It'll, sure does. It'll only take a few minutes. Okay. And this got a special sauce. Yes, it does. Um, we're going to top it with a marsala wine reduction. Okay. And are we going to do that in the same pan with the chicken? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And then we're going to... Wilt some spinach. We'll do some uh, wilted spinach. And then once we finish, we're going to place the chicken on a bed of mashed potatoes with our wilted spinach and then top that with our marsala sauce. Okay. So after the chicken finishes up, we're going to slice some cremini mushrooms. And these are just baby portobellos. Yes, Are called cremini. Absolutely. Okay. This is my particular favorite. Um, they're obviously interchangeable. Yeah. But I love the creminis. They're smaller and uh, good for certain dishes. How's that chicken looking, Scott? Doing pretty good. Good, nice brown color on them. Sure is. Yeah. Okay, so this is the point where I'll add my garlic, the shallots. Are you adding these after you turn the chicken so they wouldn't mm -hmm. burn? Just to help you. Well, yeah, you don't want them to burn the whole length of the time the chicken's cooking. Okay. And then, but you want that flavor, that garlic and the shallot to actually go in with the chicken. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to saute that. I like the one pan dishes. I just, I know it's easy for you in the restaurant, isn't it? Absolutely, Doing the one yeah. pan dishes. And the dishwasher loves it, too. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Don't forget the dishwasher. Now, at the same time, about halfway through, we'll start our uh, spinach, so they'll come around the same okay. time. You all have a veal marsala, too. Yes, On the menu, don't you? We actually, uh, we have a lot of options you can choose in place of the chicken. Um, I've seen people do seafood as well mm -hmm. on the marsala, so. And you know what else I like about your menu? You've you got a basic dish, but you can, you've can you got different proteins Absolutely. that you can add have, to the dish. We have add-ons at the bottom of the menu, uh -huh. uh, and you see that a lot. Uh, yeah. Again, you can interchange the chicken for veal, uh, practically anything, anything, yeah. scallops. Yeah, makes it nice. There's our chicken. Now that didn't take long, did it? And now the sauce. What is? What are you adding now? So now we're going to add the marsala wine. And when you're cooking over an open flame, you want to be careful because it will generate some steam and the alcohol will come up. So you don't yeah. want to create a fire. Right. So you just want to add a little bit at a time. And that's going to, what they call, deglaze the pan. That's going to get that uh, mm. the flour and all the stuff off the bottom. 
don't all the want nice to, you don't gooey want to throw bits. that away, do you? No. And that'll also help the sauce thicken. Right. Yeah. So we'll put our marsala in there, and then we'll also do the addition of the uh, chicken stock. Mm -hmm. And our mushrooms. This is so flavorful. And what wine would go good with this? Would you all recommend? I would do a white wine. Um, maybe like a Chardonnay or a Pinot mm -hmm. Grigio. Uh, something with a little bit of tartness kind of counteract that the sweetness yeah. of the Marsala. Yeah. So you are not, these are going to have a little bite to them. You don't want them real. No, you don't, you don't want to cook the mu mushrooms completely. Too always. You want to have a little bit of al dente to them. Yeah. Kind of like pasta. That's how I like mine. Right. And you are making this dish for me, right, Brian? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Might as well put my order in, huh? <laughs> yes, ma'am. This is what really doesn't take long. Yes. Is you just want to wilt this. this finish, um, yeah. This is literally 30 seconds or right. less. Right. Um, we'll season it with a little bit of salt, pepper. Mm -hmm. And tell us what you added to your uh, mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes have uh, garlic, heavy cream, butter, salt, white pepper. And uh, I think that's it. We keep it pretty basic because mm -hmm. the Marsala sauce itself has so many flavors and so many right. different seasonings. We don't want them to counteract. And you added a little parsley? Yes, ma'am. Chopped parsley to parsley. it? Right, I'm going to bring the plate over. Look at that. And what I typically do is I'll kind of bring it all towards the edge, round uh -huh. it up. Nice height on the dish. Mm-hmm. Our chicken. And the crowning touch, that great sauce. Okay. And then we'll finish off with our sauce. This is the crowning touch, huh? Yes, ma'am. Chicken wants to slide on me. <laughs> Brian, that is beautiful. Look at that. One of my favorites. Let's put that up front and center. Oh, we've got a garnish. We'll garnish with a little bit of fresh shaved Parmesan cheese. Perfect. And that is it. <gasps> beautiful. All right, we've got one more dish from V. Paul's. Yes, ma'am. And that is? We're going to do seafood risotto. Seafood risotto. You won't want to miss that, so stay with us. Cooking with natural gas is more controlled than using an electric range. But more importantly, they're less expensive to operate. Don't get burned with electric. Learn more at PensacolaEnergy.com. Natural gas homes are in demand. Here's what home builders have to say. One of the major roles of us using the tankless water heaters and gas cooktops is because of trying to utilize energy efficient features in our homes. Without reservation, our owners that have moved into a home where we use this natural gas have always been happy that we've used this and very satisfied with the product. Natural gas from Pensacola Energy, the clean, reliable, earth-friendly choice. Heat pumps don't pump much heat. In fact, heat from an efficient natural gas heater can be 30% warmer, and you can get up to an $800 rebate when you install one. Warming up to natural gas yet? Learn more at PensacolaEnergy.com. Our final dish from B. Paul's is seafood risotto. Yes, and this is going to be a, a blast through of a dish. We're going to go through this really, really quickly because this normally takes about 30 minutes, 30, mm -hmm. 45 minutes to complete. Uh, so it's going to be a real quick run through, but you'll get a good idea. And of course, you'll have the recipe on site right. uh, to start. So what we'll do is we'll start. You want to have a, a nice pan, a nice flat bottom pan, mm -hmm. uh, thick. And what you're going to do is we're using a boil rice, which is a short grain rice. And you're going to toast that off in your pan. With a little bit of oil. A little bit of oil. Mm-hmm. And in some recipes, it'll call to add your garlic or your shallots ahead of time. I usually like to do that after this is kind of warmed up. Okay. Uh, that way they, they won't burn, they won't get any color. Mm -hmm. um, so what we do, this is called tostatura. 
uh, the Italian version. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have the garlic and the shallots, which is still frito. Uh, so we put our garlic in there. And, and this would all be kind of simmering. That combination is sofrito? Sofrito. Okay. And so this would all be, you know, sizzling in your pan. Mm -hmm. And as this would be cooking, uh, once this warms up, basically the rice starts to open up, kind of like your pores do on your skin. You know, you get hot, they start to open up. So what that's going to okay. allow to do is that allow you to add your wine, and that's going to start soaking into that short grain rice and start releasing that starch. Mm. And so the first step you would do is you, to get this thing going, you add your wine, and you just keep stirring. And you want to use a wooden spoon versus a stainless steel spoon, basically because the wooden spoon will help push the rice around the pan oh. instead of cut it. Oh, Once okay. it starts to soften up, a stainless steel spoon will actually cut the rice. Okay. And so as it's going through, once this liquid starts to really absorb and it's almost gone, mm -hmm. then we would add our, uh, we have a seafood stock, a lobster stock, since we're making a seafood mm -hmm. dish. And now this would go for about, say, 25 minutes. Okay, before and we do you add, have to constantly stir it? You have to constantly, constantly stir. And then about, I would say about three quarters of the way in, about 20 minutes, that's when I add my salt. That way you will get that nice salt flavor within the rice so it cooks through so it's not a top flavor. If okay. you add it at the very end, it's just going to be a real quick salty foot mm -hmm. taste, whereas it won't get all the way through. Now the next representation we have here, we have one that's pretty much all already done. Uh, this is after the 25 minutes? This will be about 25 minutes in. Okay. And this will be closer to when you're going to be able to finish that dish. And this is about the time you want to start adding your seafood. I see. Uh, you don't want to add the seafood too early because it'll get rubbery. Mm -hmm. It'll get hard to do. So we have our, uh, we have our lobster, our lobster tails. Mm. So we take fresh lobster tails. We take the meat out. We put that in there, and that would stir around. And at the same time, I would add my cut shrimp. Now, we use the 1620 shrimp, and we cut them into pieces. You can use any size you like. If you want to leave them whole, you could leave them whole if you want. Okay. I like the bite-sized pieces in a dish like this. And the way, the, the easiest way to know when they're done is just like shrimp, anytime you cook it, it's going to turn red. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the lobster, that, that outside of that flesh is going to have a nice red color to it. Towards the end of the dish, about say two minutes or less out, that's when we want to add our calamari. And uh, we like to leave the tentacles in and everything. We love calamari at mm -hmm. V. Paul's. Uh, it's one of our most popular things that we do. Fried calamari. Yeah. And now I we have it in our it. seafood risotto. And so... This dish would cook off, and then we have our finished product. At the end of it, you would add your uh, butter. Get a few pads to finish it off. Okay, and that's at the very end. That's right. at the very end. Once, oh, once you're about to rich serve it, up, isn't it, that's going to help thicken it at the end and kind of mm -hmm. help bind that starch. And then we also have some uh, shaved Reggiano Parmesan cheese. Only the best, nice aged Parmesan. Yes, sir. And that would go in there, and then that would. Stir in. And that's going to thicken it up too. That'll thicken it up. Okay. Now, risotto is a creamy dish. It mm -hmm. doesn't have to be, if, if it's too firm, you can add a little bit more stock if it's too firm for you at the end. Uh, because it, it is a creamy dish because of the starch that's coming out of the rice. Um, and then we have our finished product. And look how beautiful this Watch is. Oh, look at that. Our three different seafoods in there. Ah, that it, creamy risotto. It's one risotto. of my favorites. I mean, it's, it's awesome. I can't wait to taste that. We need to give everyone our telephone number. If you would like to try these recipes at home, you can call Pensacola Energy at 436-5050, or you can visit our website at coastalcooking.com. Joining us now is Contessa Gibson. She is the general manager at V. Paul's, and you have lots of things going on, of course, at the restaurant, but tell everyone about your four Italian nights. Well, Carmela, the four Italian nights start with Tuesdays. At 4.30 when we open, we have half-price lasagna and spaghetti with meatballs. On Wednesday, we do half-price wine Wednesday, kind of wind down on your Wednesday. We have a limited menu that has specific bottles each week that change, and you get half-price of that bottle. If you don't finish it there, you can take it home with you. We seal it up. Then we have ladies' night on Thursday nights. We have several drink specials and tons of great wine. And then on Friday nights, we have live music from 6 p.m. until 9 p.m. We have a different uh, musician come every Friday. So also, we have a lot of different things coming up. Uh, November, we have a cooking class on November 8th. You will learn how to prepare a four-course meal. You'll get recipe cards, and you'll get to eat it. 
and you'll get to hang out with these guys again. So that's Sounds a lot good. of fun. Yes, yes. Now that'll be done in our event room. It's a banquet hall that we have. We also have the test kitchen in there. We can have Christmas parties. If you have a mm -hmm. Christmas party coming up, we hold about 120 people sitting. Now they do a lot of fun things for our Christmas parties. We can do pasta stations where they can wow your guests by making their very own custom pasta. We can do pretty much anything you want in there. So definitely go to our website, uh, bpauls.com to take a look at that. Great, and also what are your hours? Oh, dinner. We are closed on Sundays and Mondays. We open Tuesday through Thursday from 4.30 until 9 p.m. And then on Fridays and Saturdays, we are open from 4.30 p.m. until 10 p.m. And your location? We are at 29 Palafox Place, downtown Pensacola. Great. Well, this is just a sample of what you'll find at V Paul's. Yes. Much more on the menu, extensive wine list. And you all are very, very knowledgeable in the wines to suggest mm -hmm. what your patrons can have. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, you've done a great job. Contessa, I think we're going to enjoy all this today, don't you? Absolutely. All right, well, we hope you'll join us again next week. We'll be back with more Coastal Cooking. This has been Coastal Cooking with your host, Carmela Campbell. Coastal Cooking is brought to you by Pensacola Energy, provider of clean, efficient, natural gas. Join us each Sunday at 6 p.m. for more Coastal Cooking.